I'm going to explain uh, a little bit about the uh, functions that we're using in this particular lab view uh, project. So what we're going to do is use a icon that will check if it's in range is what it, it's called actually. Um, so to, to see what this does, you click on the question mark and then click this thing. Um, it says the upper limit is here, the lower limit is here, and in the middle is X. And then the output says in range, and it's green. So what these values are, these are orange. Orange is doubles, so those are floating point numbers. Um, and the output is a boolean. And basically what it says is uh, whatever your input is, X, it's comparing to see if that value is between the upper limit and the lower limit. If that is true, then the output will become true. If it's not true, the output will become false. You can ignore this coerced output right here for the moment. We'll go into that later. Um, but basically what you want to do is use this in our burglar alarm system. We have an analog input, which I'm going to actually simulate as a control on my front panel. And uh, so I have a control that's my input right now. I'm going to have an upper limit, which is a, the maximum high. I'm going to turn that into a constant, and I'll put that up here. I'll have a lower limit, which is also a constant. And then on the output here, I'm going to create an indicator, a Boolean indicator. And that's going to tell me whether or not my X value is within the range of my two uh, limits. So if I have 0 and I make this 1, when I run this code, right now 0 is within the limits of 0 and 1. If I have a, oh, sorry, let me continuously run. If I have a 1, 1 is high, well, it's not within that range anymore. Let me see here. Uh, 0 0.999. So 0 0.999 is within the range between 0 and 1. Uh, but if I have negative 0 0.001, that is not within the range. It's lower than our lower limit. Uh, so if I have any value, that is between 0 and 1, my output will be true. So you can take this and uh, use it to do a comparison on the different states in your home alarm system. Our analog voltage on the input is controlled by uh, several resistors that are in a voltage divider. And we have multiple different stages um, where we're comparing. So if it's, for instance, uh, if it's 0 0.1 volts, that might mean that the back door only is open. If it's 0 0.2 volts, maybe that means the back door and the back window are open. Well, what you need to do is around each one of these values, which you should have in your truth table, um, around each one of these values, you want to have an upper and a lower limit. And that's exactly what's done in uh, the example code that is on the document that you have for the Elvis home alarm system. Now the values of these thresholds are going to depend on whatever your expected input is. So again, if I say my back door only is open, then I get 0 0.1 volts coming in on my input. And the next step up is at 0 0.2 volts. What's going to happen is I need to have a threshold value that's in between those two numbers. So what I'll say here, uh, and I'll actually make a, well, I need to delete this. And I will make a copy of this guy. And what I'm going to do is link my upper limit from the bottom to my lower limit 
on top. It's giving me trouble here. because I don't have a value, that's why. I'm going to create a constant attached to those things. There we go. Um, and then on my output, I'm actually going to use an OR statement. This is a compound uh, object here. And what this will do is allow me, I can change the different types of operations that it has but it allows me to use multiple inputs if I, if I need to or if I want to. So right now though if I mouse over this the inputs are boolean, or sorry, they're did, uh, doubles so they're floating point numbers and the output is an integer. What I have to do is connect this boolean output to the input here and now it automatically turns all the inputs and outputs to boolean. This is what's called polymorphism, and we'll go over that more in class, how to, how to create polymorphic VIs. But basically what I'm doing is now, I'm going to turn on this in range uh, button if it's within the range of either of these uh, elements. So I'm going to say 0. Um, if I expect my X here, this is the back door for instance. Um, if I expect this to be 0 0.1 volts, I need to have a range uh, that that 0 0.1 volts will fit into. So I'm going to say um, 0 is a good lower limit for that because 0 0.1 is above 0. For the next limit, since this will be linked to my uh, the next highest input value, which here would be, I believe I said backdoor and window, um, what this will be is 0 0.1 volts, or sorry, 0 0.2 volts, and this one again 0 0.1 volts. Now the reason that we're doing uh, these ranges is if you calculated exactly the number of volts that should be, and you put an, an equal to uh, comparison. Um, once the resistors heat up a little bit, it's actually going to change the voltage you get. So you want to have this a little bit of a, like a fuzzy logic. You want to have a little range that you can have the, the inputs between. Um, and this, these uh, elements allow you to do that. Um, so if I expect a number between 0 0.1 volt and 0 0.2 volt to be my cutoff value for the upper limit of this one uh, and to be the lower limit of this one, I will just average these two numbers together and find the midpoint. So that will be 0.15 volts. And so now 0.15 volts is the upper limit to the back door. And uh, it's the lower limit of the back door and the window case. So uh, the upper limit here, I, I don't have another voltage, but say I had a 0.3 volts, this chain continued. What I would want is something in between 0.2 and 0.3. So that could be 0.25. And so now if I run this, if I have 0.11 volts and hit enter, that's still going to be in range of the back door. If I have 0.21, it's no longer in range of the back doors. Now I'm going to be in range of the, the, the back door and the window. Um, because I ORed these together, that's not showing that. So let me get rid of this OR gate. I'm going to say in range actually will be uh, going to one indicator, and then I have a second indicator. So this is backdoor only. backdoor and window. So when I run this code now, and obviously you can clean this up a bit more so you can make sure those don't cross one another. Um, when I run this code now, um, now I can see 0 0.21 
is in the back door and window. If I have 0 0.11, it's the back door only because it's within this range. 0 0.15 is right here at the upper limit. So that if you're at the upper limit, uh, uh, notice these little icons here. So the dark square means inclusive. So it's 0 to 0 0.15 with 0 being inclusive. So it's anything 0 or greater. Now the top icon or the top square there is not inclusive. So not 0 0.15 for this. Anything less than that is what it will be looking for. This is useful because if this were supposed to be equal uh, for for 0 0.15 equal as your upper limit and then 0 0.15 is also equal for your lower limit you'll get into some issues where you'll be uh, you have ambiguous signals so it's important to note that this is 0 to 0 0.15 inclusive with 0 uh, and then the next one is 0 0.15 inclusive to 0 0.25 so now, if, what if I put 4999? That is less than 1.5. It's in the back door only. If I have 0 0.2, that's the back door and the window. So play around with these cases. For your entire truth table, what you should do, what I recommend, build your truth table in Excel, and then highlight all of the cells and sort them by voltage. Once you sort them by voltage, you'll have an idea of what doors are open, what you know, windows are open, and whatnot. Um, it might help to have column um, an, or an extra column um, in your truth table next to your voltages called notes, and then just describe in English words which doors are open and which doors are not. Because looking at the truth table, it might be a little confusing. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully you guys can can figure that out from there. I, I assumed you would be able to, to figure this out just by looking at the help here, um, but some people seem to be asking me the same questions over and over again uh, that I've, you know, told other people, and um, they're just not understanding this as a critical element. So this these voltage thresholds are not the voltage that you measured on your resistors. They are thresholds that you create around the values you measured with on your resistors. So uh, please send me an email if you have any issues with this and uh, good luck and I really uh, expect you know to see good projects on Monday.